Hello, this is Wampire. For today's video, I want to uh, basically show you some very, very fundamental ideas on how to make your Eskrima, your stick fighting, just a little bit more on the realistic side. The reason why I'm making this video is because earlier I saw on YouTube a video about uh, a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu instructor who's a brown belt and he found a black belt Brazilian Jiu Jitsu instructor who was a fraud. So they basically confronted the guy and all basically what he said was can we spar you know let's roll just two minutes is fine let's roll because that's what it really comes down to yes he asked for the guy's certification and stuff like that but what it really came down to was let's roll so in that kind of situation I'm not saying that you guys need to prove yourselves or that you should go prove yourselves but just trying to figure out what is a fundamental skill that you should have in your arsenal. You know, just the, the fundamental basics that you should have developed. And this is what I could think of, okay? So the first thing, let's start off with shadow boxing. And this is Eskrima, this is stick fighting. Uh, so in this case, you're going to be shadow boxing, not, not barehanded, not like boxing or kickboxing. But you're going to be shadow boxing with a stick or with a training knife. So that's that's the idea there. Shadow box with those weapons. And uh, you might be wondering about how long. 20 minutes is, is what I think you should be able to do. Is you should be able to go 20 minutes. That's a long, long time. So what, what we're going to do is we're going to break it down into 5 minutes. Okay. So 5 minutes times 4 equals 20. And uh, so what are you going to be doing for those four, four different sessions of five minutes each? Well, the first thing is single stick. The second thing is, the, the second session, you should be using double stick. And then the next one is single training knife. And then the last one is double training knife. So yes, we use a whole lot of different weapons and stuff. But when it really comes down to it for the stick fighting arts, I believe the stick and the training knife, those are our two most essentials. Yes, we do improvised weapons. Yes, we do empty hand too. But when it comes down to it, those are the two fundamentals that you should really be working on. So in my opinion, stick with those. So yes, I know uh, in my videos recently, I've been encouraging you guys to shadow box for like three minutes at a time, but that's starting off. So you wanna get to the point, like I said, is to be able to go five minutes for four rounds basically so that's 20 minutes should be able to do 20 minutes alright so uh, the other thing is time wise how much time should you spend and uh, I'm just gonna go with the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu thought that if you've been training seriously then I would say six months that's right around the time when the white belt who's been training seriously for six months can go compete so that I would say the same thing. Aim for six months at a time, you know. So your first uh, serious, okay, I'm gonna do this. I'm really gonna do this, and I'm gonna keep this up, and I'm gonna be practicing, and I'm gonna be, you know, on my spare time, I'm gonna be all about this. Well, for six months, you know, that's your first goal, and then the next one is try to do it again for another six months. You know what I mean? So that that's what I recommend. All right, the second thing we're gonna go into is footwork. That is one of the most popular questions that I get asked. Uh, about his footwork, but I think a lot of times people don't understand what footwork really is or why it's really important. People just hear that and other people just parrot it and they go, yeah, footwork, it's all about footwork, but they don't really know why, okay? So to me, the footwork, the way that I teach it is the most fundamental thing about footwork is that it comes from boxing, just plain and simple. So the idea is to have a circular footwork, okay? It looks like you're just going sideways, but you're not. You're actually going in a circular motion. And it, it doesn't matter if you cut through and go diagonally either. That's, that's completely fine too. But the idea of footwork is, is that when a person has a fighting stance, and let's say their right hand is to the front like this, then you're going to be going this way towards their back. Okay, if you go this way, you're going in between both arms and then you got both legs to also deal with. So that's not what we want to do we want to go the other way because whether it's for combat or for self-defense the most important thing is for you to be safe and if if that is the most core fundamental then we're going this way towards their back okay um, 
that that's the bottom line all right now there's plenty of other thoughts and strategies where you go you know where they're stronger in their attacks and stuff but the main idea like i said from a defensive point of view even in combat a defensive point of view where you are going to survive your survival is the most important thing because once we start getting into weapons and stuff even a quick nick can really cause a lot of damage it can so we want to avoid those as much as possible the next important part about footwork is can you put your body weight into your attack okay that's the next thing that I feel is very very important in footwork is you don't want to just do like an arm only attack it's where you're actually using this requires the entire body good body mechanics but the footwork is involved for sure so your feet are gonna help you propel in the right way and put your body into it so that's the next thing that you should be working on and now the more advanced concept of footwork basically I just broke it into three parts number one is a strategy where you're just being defensive you're circling around towards their back and then number two is being able to work on that body mechanics where you're putting your body weight into it number three it just comes down to it doesn't matter what style of martial art you're training in uh, this is pretty much uh, what you're going for which is the ability to multitask okay so when your body mechanics are good you're gonna be able to multitask so in other words can you attack and move at the same time can you defend and move at the same time the ability to multitask regardless of style is what's gonna separate a beginner from someone who's seasoned all right, uh, a beginner they ha they can't do it well. So if they're gonna attack, they need to just 100% attack. If they're gonna move, they need to 100% move. If they try to move and defend or move and attack, they're not gonna do a good job of it. So that's when they're gonna be vulnerable. Uh, a person who is much more seasoned is gonna be able to to do multitask. So they'll be one step ahead, at least one step ahead of their opponent, and they'll they will be able to capitalize on that. Okay, the last thing that I want to cover is strategy. Uh, the most basic thing that we do is called defang the snake. And uh, that basically, you could define that as when the attack is coming in, you're going to attack their attack. But what it really comes down to is the primary targets that we want, it doesn't change regardless of style, whether it's European fencing, whether it's Japanese sword fighting, kendo, or whatever it doesn't change the targets that we want is going to be the same unless you're using a different type of weapon okay so the head the throat you know the groin all, all this kind of stuff it's not going to change you're going for these things but because that can be difficult to get to that's why we're defanging the snake so that means basically when we defang the snake we're going for secondary targets they're not the most ideal targets but once again, when you have a blade or when you have other kinds of weapons in your hand, even though they're not the target that I really want, sometimes you could be surprised that even you know the secondary target can cause a lot of damage. So that, that's what we're going for, essentially. Okay, so the next part of strategy is I want you guys to keep in mind that there's a ton of different types of tactics and strategies going on. There's all kinds of setups and stuff that you can do. But... Basically bringing all that together and bringing it down in a nutshell, just simplifying, oversimplifying it, it comes down to breaking their posture. This is the same, exactly the same thing in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, okay? You're breaking their posture. If they're off balance, they need to recover that. If they don't, they're in a very, very weak spot and their attacks, their defenses are, is not going to be as good as it can be and we're there to capitalize on that so as their balance is, is bad as their posture is bad we could already be attacking them at that point so that's what we're doing um, keep in mind once again the primary thing we want to do is we want all the primary targets the headshot we want to hit them you know in in the stomach or you know all the main uh, targets there that's difficult to do and th keep in mind if, if they're game and they're trying to fight back, they're trying to do the same thing to you. So I want their primary targets, they want my primary targets. If we go at it, then it's it's equal, all right? And it, we're gonna be in big trouble. So we need other things. Instead of doing that, we're gonna be attacking and breaking their posture. By doing that, it's gonna create windows of opportunity so that we can go to our primary targets that we want. So in other words, what we're doing is we're going step by step by step, breaking them down slowly, slowly, little by little, 
to open windows of opportunity. If they don't have that skill and they don't have that kind of strategy, then what they're doing is they just got to immediately go for my primary targets. What they're doing is a dice roll. They're in Las Vegas. That's all they know. They know zero or full, full attack. Whereas to what we're doing here by breaking their posture is we're going step by step. You know, we know how to climb there and get there, you know, get to our goal. And, and that makes our method a little bit safer and a little bit more realistic. What they have to do is they have to take a big chance and risk a lot. All right, the last essential part is, once again, very, very similar to Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and it's actually positioning. Uh, positioning is placing yourself in a place that you know how to defend you know how to attack from there. You know what to expect from there, all right? That's positioning. Um, in the Filipino martial arts, from what I can tell, positioning comes from the hubud. And um, the way that I personally like to teach it, my own interpretation, which this whole video, all my videos is my own interpretation of the Filipino martial arts. But in this particular one, um, the hubud area the way that I like to teach is I like to go back to the fundamentals just like when we're doing the stick stuff I ask you guys to shadow box I ask you guys to you know go back to boxing and even if it's with the training knife or with a stick is to put in you know that kinda that kinda movement in there so back to the fundamentals so same thing with the who but I like to go into basic MMA or Muay Thai clinch so to just have a fundamental there and to work from that to the point where you can start applying more of the sensitivity type skills. Uh, that's the way I, I personally like to teach it. Yeah, so those are my basic ideas for your fundamentals when it comes down to actually applying this stuff in a real life situation. So anyway, I hope that helps shed some light because there's a lot of material that we often cover, but you know, just putting it down to more core fundamental fundamentals that that you can grasp and actually practice hopefully this helps thank you for watching and take care folks